those cases there. Next thing, again, the book just puts this into the section because we're talking about definitions here and we're going to start changing definitions into if-then statements and then even going forward by conditional statements. So the first thing we see here is can we make some assumptions about what's going on based on what we're given? So decide whether each statement is true or false and explain your answer using the diagram. The blue marks over here from me previously, so kind of ignore those for a second, but the first one, AC is perpendicular to BD. The red box is from the text. We can say that is true because there's enough given information there. AEB and CEB are a linear pair. Again, if we look at those arcs where those were, do they form a line? Yes, indeed they do. And then AEA and EB are opposite rays. Well, no, EA is here, EB is here, so that's not true. Those are not opposite. Okay, so we do have our image there. Okay, so decide what's true here. Again, I'm going to keep moving forward, give you the answers here, pause, take an opportunity to put yes or no, true or false, whatever the case may be. JMF, FMG are supplementary. So again, JMF is here. FMG is here, supplementary. We're going to go ahead and say yes, that's true. Point M is the midpoint. Again, it might look like it, but we don't have enough information, so we're going to put no. Uh, JMF, again, is this one. And then HMG is this one. So those are vertical. Yes, that's the that's what they need to be. So they're formed by two lines crossing and they only share a vertex. And then the last one is they're perpendicular, FH and JG. And no, we don't have quite enough information there. Okay, so all we know is that the lines cross. We don't know what those angles are. So kind of going forward from that, we have what's called a biconditional statement. So again, a biconditional is when all four of the um, true, all four of the conditional, converse, inverse, and contrapositive can be stated as true statements. And then you can see the notation here changes a little bit. Instead of writing if then in a biconditional or in a conditional, we write if and only if in between our hypothesis and conclusion in a biconditional. And then for our notation here, we have the arrows going both ways. And when we read this with symbols, we just put. We just say P if and only if Q. Okay, so it's not P implies Q anymore because P it's it's P if and only if Q, and that means it goes both directions. So the definition of a per uh, the definition here we have if two lines intersect to form a right angle, then they are perpendicular lines. So we can see here two lines form a right angle if and only if they are perpendicular. There's no if at the beginning. There's no then in the middle. We just write it as all as one biconditional statement. And we know that that's true. We could say this either direction in an if-then statement. We could also say if two lines are perpendicular, then they form a right angle. That's what we know about perpendicular lines from up above. So again, that's kind of changing it into that biconditional statement. Okay, so again, take an opportunity, rewrite these out. I'm just going to read them out here. And you guys can kind of listen to what I say. That'll save some time on the video for typing. That way it doesn't overrun the time on YouTube here. So again, pause, write it down, make sure yours says what mine says. So first of all, we're supposed to take these two definitions and write them as a, a biconditional. So for the first one, we're going to put an angle is a right angle if and only if its measure is 90 degrees. Okay, so I'll read that again. An angle is a right angle if and only if its measure is 90 degrees. So again, we're going to cancel out that if then. Those are going to go away and we're going to put if and only if in the middle. The next one, two line segments, two line segments have the same length if and only if they are congruent. So again, we're throwing out the if then and we're going to put if and only if in the middle. So two line segments have the same length if and only if they are congruent segments. The next two are kind of different, but they basically give you a hypothesis conclusion statement with a real life scenario. And then you just put it as an if and only if statement. So it says, if Mary is in theater class, then she will be in the fall play. If she's in the fall play, then she must be taking theater. So we can say for our biconditional, Mary is in theater class, if and only if she's in the fall play. Okay. So again, Mary's in theater class, if and only if she's in the fall play. Next one, if you can run for president, then you are at least 35. If you're at least 35, you can run for president. So you can say you can run for president if and only if you're 35 years old. Okay, so that's a real life scenario. Both of those were real life scenarios where we just 
changed it into a biconditional statement. It doesn't really have a whole lot to do with math. We can just write it that way. The last thing we have here in the lesson is truth tables. These tend to trick students or confuse them from time to time. But if we think of what we have right here to start off this truth table uh, thing with as kind of the key to everything, we should be okay. So the first thing I always tell students is to ignore the far right column for just a second and treat this as all the possible outcomes because that's all they're doing here is listing out the possible outcomes. So the, the statements themselves right now are irrelevant. It doesn't matter what the statements are. Those P and Qs could be anything. But what I have to do sometimes is tell students, think of two coins and you're flipping two coins. The possible outcomes for flipping two coins are heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, and tails, tails. Okay. So again, the, the statement themselves are irrelevant. We're listing the possibilities. True, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. That's it. Those are the possible outcomes. So now the key, a conditional statement, P implies Q, is what we always kind of refer back to and use. So P implies Q is what we use. And what we know, what we need to know, is that the only time P implies Q is going to produce a, a false statement is when it says true implies false. Everything else yields a true outcome or a true result. So true implies true is obviously true. That doesn't really mess with kids too much. True implies false is false. Again, kids can get on board with that. For some reason, though, false implies true being true really trips kids up. Remember, if the conclusion is true, you have a true outcome, okay? And then the only other one is false implies false is true. And most of the time, kids get on board with that, and that's okay. Okay, so two statements can be logically equivalent when they have the same truth table. So this is a conditional statements truth table. And we'll talk about like converse, inverse, and contrapositive here in a second. But if it has the same truth value, true, false, true, true, those are equivalent statements. So we'll, we'll refer back to those things that we said earlier about the inverse and converse. Okay, so it says, use the truth table above and make the converse, inverse, and contrapositive for a conditional statement. So I'm going to go back and we're going to write these all out. So first, we have P implies Q. So P implies Q is the first one we did. And we said that was true, false, true, true. Okay, then I'm going to set up the other. So I'm just going to have a P column and a Q column so that I can set these up. And then we're going to do the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. So converse is Q implies P. Inverse is negate P implies negate Q. And then the contrapositive is negate Q implies negate P. Okay, so we're going to have truth tables set up for all of these, but we're going to kind of do them separately. Now, before we do the, the negation ones, we should make a negation P and a negation Q. So remember, the possible outcomes are what we're doing here. So true, true, false, false is what we always list here. And then again, true, false, true, false. Okay, so I can use this one for Q implies P. So if I go this way, I say true implies true for Q implies P. So if I'm going this way, true implies true is true. False implies true is true. True implies false is false. And false implies false is true. So for the bottom one, false implies false is true. So there is my converse. There is my converse truth table. It's true, true, false, true. Now, for the next one, I need the negation of P. So if I look at these, the negation of P and the negation of Q, I just do the opposite. So true was the first one, I'm going to put false. True was the second one, I'm going to put false. False was the third one, I'm going to put true. False was the fourth one, I'm going to put true. And then we flip the other ones as well. False, true, false, true. Now I can use these for over here for my inverse and for my contrapositive. This one's contrapositive over here. Okay, so negate P implies negate true. False implies false is true. False implies true is still true. True implies false is false. And true implies true is true. So if you'll notice, the converse and the inverse have the same exact truth table. Okay, and then when we go to do the last one, 
false implies tr false is true. So we put a true there. Notice I'm going from Q to P. True implies false. That's false. Our next one is false implies true. Again, my hypothesis is true. So that's okay. Or excuse me, my conclusion. And then true implies true at the very end is true. And you'll notice our contrapositive and our original conditional statement over here are the same. True, false, true, true. So we have that same truth value in both. Hold on, Charlie. Shh, hold on, Charlie. So now let's make a truth table for these. Again, pause it and take a second. Pardon me for just a second. I'm trying to handle my kiddo. What are you doing, baby? Quit messing with it, honey. Here. Here, take it back. Oh. Okay, take it back to the couch. All right, sorry guys. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse was on. So here's what I'm going to do, and we're going to do this a little more organized. Pardon me, I'm trying.